As if you need a reminder, we've been talking about series. What's a series again? Well, you've got a sequence of numbers and you're adding them all up, all the way to infinity. And we want to know, does that series converge to a number or does it diverge? Does it get infinitely big or does it oscillate or something like that? And so we've developed a number of tests like the nth term test for divergence. We've got the geometric series test, which is super easy to apply as is the p-series test. And then the p-series was based on the integral test, which we can apply sometimes if the terms in our sequence are, like we have to replace it with a function which is continuous and positive and decreasing. Okay, let's add to our list. We've got two more tests here. We've got the direct comparison or the limit comparison test, and it has its basis right here in this warm-up question. So take a look. Assume 0 is less than a sub n, which is less than or equal to b sub n for all n. In other words, a sub n, those are the terms of the sequence that you're looking at, and you're comparing that to uh, b sub n, and your terms are always smaller than or equal to the terms in b sub n. Okay, all right, well, what if the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of b sub n converges? In other words, this is a convergent series right here. All your terms are less than or equal to that, and they're positive. What's got to be true about the series composed of the terms of a sub n? So basically, you are smaller than a convergent series. Therefore, you must converge. There's the first one. Okay, the second one, let's say that 0 is less than b sub n, which is less than or equal to a sub n for all n. So again, we have positive terms in our sequence, and b sub n, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> a sub n, the one that we are considering, all the terms in that sequence are always bigger than or equal to the terms in b sub n. And b sub n, if we add up all the terms, take that series, Add them all up, it diverges. Our series is now larger than a divergent series. If you're bigger than something that goes off to infinity, yeah, you're pretty much going to diverge as well. So this forms the basis of what we call the direct comparison test. We're going to take our series and compare it to something that we already know either converges or diverges, which is what the comparison tests are all about. So we have to get good at taking a look at our series and going, hmm, what can I compare that to? And what we usually compare it to are things that are very easy to tell whether or not they converge or diverge, and that is like geometric series and p-series. We're comparing some apples to some oranges. Well, if this apple here converges and all of these oranges are smaller than that apple, it has to also converge. Which brings us to the direct comparison test, and there are two parts to it, one for convergent and one for divergent. So you can see that this reads exactly like the warm-up exercise. If 0 is less than a sub n, which is less than or equal to b sub n for all n, and the series of b sub n terms converges, then a sub n also has to converge. Again, in layman's terms, this basically says if your series is smaller than a known convergent series, it must also converge. All right, let's look at this on the other side. If 0 is less than b sub n, which is less than or equal to a sub n for all n, a sub n is the sequence that you are dealing with, and we know that the series involved with the b sub n terms diverges, then our series composed of a sub n terms must also diverge. Again, in layman's terms, that just simply means that if your series is bigger than a series, a known series that diverges, it must also diverge. Okay, all right, so let's write something down here and apply it in this case here in just a second. Oh, oh, before we move on, when you go to apply this, make sure that you meet the conditions. So the conditions are established by the hypothesis of this conditional. You have to make sure your terms are positive. If it diverges, you have to make sure that your terms are greater than, e greater than or equal to the terms of some sort of known sequence that you've determined either diverges in this case, or it's smaller than or equal to something that converges in this case, okay? All right, it's only useful if you already 
uh, know a particular series to converge it to, or, or, or compare it to, sorry, um, converges or diverges. So the ones that we can very easily can compare it to, or uh, what do we got there? We got we got P series right there. When does this thing converge? P series always converges when P is greater than one, not equal to, because if it's equal to one, do you remember what it's called? Harmonic. That's correct. Okay. So it converges when P is greater than one, or we're going to compare it to, let's say the geometric series, which is also very easy to be able to tell whether or not it converges or diverges. And this one is going to converge whenever your common ratio, the absolute value of it is less than one. All right. Okay. So let's get started on this example right about here. Determine whether the series from n equals 1 to infinity, 1 over 2n plus 1 quantity squared converges or diverges. So first of all, are these terms positive? Well, I'm being squared down here, and I'm starting with n equals 1, so no matter what, this is positive, so we're good to go. Now, what my suggestion is always to do is to start with the nth term test for divergence because most of the time you can just perform that in your head and if it fails then you know that your series diverges and you're done however if we were to take the limit of just this nth term right here we can see that the bottom gets bigger and bigger and bigger the top stays one so this is going to approach zero which is unhelpful but at least we know we've eliminated that part. Okay, so let's get started on actually applying the direct comparison test. Now, why are we not applying something like uh, the integral test? Well, the problem with the integral test is that we've got some sort of squared thing down here, and it's not like this would be something that would be easy to take the antiderivative of, right? However, if I were to square this guy out, I would have 4n squared plus 4n plus 1. And let's see, what are we going to compare this guy to? So if I just take a look at burp, 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 this thing right here, it's 1 over n squared. It's basically the, the dominant terms, 1 over n squared. That is definitely going to converge because it's a convergent P series. So let's say that we're going to compare it to the series composed of n equals 1 to infinity of just 1 over n squared, which is a convergent P series with p being uh, greater than 1, right? Of course, it's 2. It's greater than 1. So what I need to make sure is that since this one converges, we need to be smaller than a convergent. So we're going to say that this is our a sub n. a sub n needs to be less than or equal to the terms in b sub n, and this is our b sub n sequence. Okay, so let's see if we can establish that inequality. I have 1 over 4n squared plus 4n plus 1. Is that less than or equal to 1 over n squared? Well, isn't this a greater denominator down here? This is a greater denominator, so it should be a smaller number overall. If it's not obvious to you, then all you got to do is just keep going with it and make sure that you eventually end up with a true statement. Do some algebra with it. So we'll cross multiply here. Yeah. When we cross multiply, realize that we have nothing but positive terms. So our inequality does not switch directions. So it'll look like n squared is less than or equal to 4n squared plus 4n plus 1. Still looks like a true statement to me. Maybe we just take this n squared, subtract it over to the other side. I have 0 is less than or equal to 3n squared plus 4n plus 1. And uh, if you, it doesn't even matter. Whenever you stick in, remember, we're starting with positive numbers. We square it times by 3, add 4 times that number plus 1. This is always going to be a positive number, so this is a true statement for n is greater than or equal to 1, so we're in business. So let's draw our conclusion then by the limit comparison test. So we want to make sure that we meet the criteria, and the criteria goes like this. Since 0 is less than 
our a sub n terms was 1 over 2n plus 1 squared, I believe, which is less than or equal to 1 over n squared. 4 n is greater than or equal to 1. So there's the first part of it. And the series n from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared is a convergent. P series, and you might even point out that you know your P is right there. It's it's two, which is greater than one. Then the series from n equals one to infinity of one over two n plus one quantity squared also converges. Now this last part is extra, but it doesn't hurt. What test did we just use? by the direct comparison test. If you, whoops, uh, I guess I should put the word just there. Uh, that's pretty much not how you spell that word. Let me try that again. Okay, yeah. So if you didn't put that last part where you named the, C, uh, the test that we performed, it would be totally okay because we have met the criteria for the test and we drew the proper conclusion from it. Okay, so here is a summary of that. We have compared to our series to the convergent P series, right? And then what we had to do is establish our inequality. We cross multiplied to make sure that it was true. It totally was, and therefore we were able to say that it was a convergent series by the direct comparison test. So a couple of pro tips right here when you're applying the direct comparison test. Step number one, choose a comparison series that closely resembles the series that you are given. So when we looked back over here, I basically took the most dominant terms in the series. It looks like one over something squared, so that looks like a one over n squared, a convergent P series. Discuss the convergence of the new series B sub n. Does it converge or does it diverge? Okay, and then you want to set up your inequality. If it converges, we have to be smaller. If it diverges, we have to be bigger. And finally, draw your conclusion by the direct comparison test. All right, a couple of more things, however, something to watch out for, and that is, let's say that your terms of your sequence are greater than or equal to the terms of another sequence that you know converges. What do you know? You don't know anything. If you're greater than a convergent series, you could either converge or diverge. We don't know. Likewise, if the terms of your sequence are smaller than something that you know diverges, what do you know? Again, you know nothing. Why is that? Because you can be smaller than something that goes off to infinity and still go off to infinity, but then it's also possible that you uh, converge to some sort of finite number, so you don't know. Remember, direct comparison test. If your series converges, you're trying to find a series that's that yours is smaller than, smaller than a convergent series. And if yours diverges, you suspect it diverges, you need to make sure that yours, you can compare it to something that is, yours is larger than, larger than a divergent must diverge.